Hi, I'm Matthias Beck. I'm one of the authors of Computing to Continuous Discreetly. And in this video, we will continue discussing Erhard MacDonald reciprocity. We will see an extension of it. And in turn, this extension can be specialized to realize the famous Dane Somerville equations. To start, we need to talk a little bit more about faces of a given polytope. We know how they're defined. What I want to concentrate on now are relations between faces given by set inclusion. So for example, this triangle, we can see that uh, this vertex V3 is a face of the edge E2. And so what we'll construct is called a face lattice. This is a list of all faces arranged by set inclusion. So for example, we can see that uh, V3 is a face of E2 because I have this edge over here in my face lattice. And this edge indicates this relation between faces. OK, so now I would like to define face numbers. So again, for a given polytope by fk, we uh, typically uh, denote the number of k-dimensional faces. So for example, in this case, we have f1 is 3 because there are three edges in this triangle. The example of this triangle actually uh, generalizes. So let's do the example where my polytope P is a, a, a D simplex. Then, because for a simplex, every face is given by a subset of vertices and vice versa, every subset of vertices gives a face. That means for a simplex, the face lattice is a Boolean lattice. So a Boolean lattice is a partially ordered set given by the subsets of a finite set. And so now you can convince yourself that in a Boolean lattice, the number of elements on any given sort of height in the partially ordered set is a binomial coefficient. And I claim, if I think of this as a face lattice of a simplex, the uh, face number fk will be d plus 1, choose k plus 1. So again, you can see this in this case. Yeah, so this is the example d equals 2. And so if you look at f1, for example, there's, uh, again, three edges. And this, I claim, is the binomial coefficient 3 choose 2. OK, so now what I'd like to do is I would like to record these face numbers in a, in a generating function. Well, this will be a, a finite generating function. It's just a polynomial. And the reason is sometimes this polynomial uh, looks very nice. So for example, in the case of my D simplex, this uh, F polynomial, it's, it's called sometimes, will be now encoded by binomial uh, coefficients. And I guess I should do a, a little um, change of variables in the sum. So let me start this sum at k equals 1, and then write the coefficient d plus 1 over k instead. And so if I want to still have an x to the k, I need to divide by 1 over x. And now I can realize this is almost uh, a binomial, binomial 1 plus x, um, I guess, to the power d plus 1. And we're just missing the constant term. Why am I doing yeah. this sort of finite generating function? Well, really, at the end of the day, what I want to do is I want to get the alternating sum of phase numbers. And so this is this is evaluation of this polynomial at negative one. There we 
this is called the Euler characteristic of the polytope. And um, after a famous theorem, and, and this theorem says that this Euler characteristic is always one, and I want you to realize that, uh, at least in the case of the simplex, we can we can see this here immediately. So if I plug in x equals negative 1, I get a 1 over negative 1 times minus 1, which is a constant 1. But this Euler relation holds for any convex polytope, a given dimension, and it's a quite a non-trivial theorem to prove. But by the way, you've seen me sort of think of this um, evaluation of some polynomial at negative 1. You can guess that there's a relation to the type of reciprocity theorems we've talked about in the previous chapter. And in fact, I will give you a, a concrete relation to Ehrhardt MacDonald reciprocity in a moment. But in some sense, this is changing the historical context a, a little bit. There's good reasons to say that the Euler relation is sort of the mother of all combinatorial reciprocity theorems. At any rate, so now let me show you, at least in the case of a rational polytope, how to see the Euler relation actually as a consequence of Ehrhardt MacDonald reciprocity. And this is based on the fact that any polytope can be written as the union of its faces. And this is a disjoint union if I take the relative interior of each face. And so if I want to go back to my triangle, I'm trying to get sort of this picture that I'm that I'm writing my triangle as the Uh, union of the open triangle and then three relatively open line segments and then the three vertices as a zero dimensional object a vertex is its own relative interior okay if we, if we translate this in the language of Erhard polynomials or Erhard quasi polynomials we get um, that the Erhard quasi polynomial of p is the union of the Erhard quasi polynomial of each face, well, we have to take the interior. Okay, now if I now use Erhard MacDonald reciprocity on each face, I will get sort of this correction factor uh, negative one to the dimension of the face, and then the Erhard polynomial of the face, of the closure of the face evaluated at negative t. So far so good. So now what I'll do with this identity over here is I will consider only the constant terms, both the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So on the left over here, we know that the constant term of any Erhard polynomial is 1. And on the right, I still get this alternating sum. And again, the constant term of Erhard polynomial of a face is 1, and I will get the same constant term if I plug in negative t. And so what you see over here is a reformulation of the Euler relation. If you look back at how we proved that the constant term of an Erhard polynomial is 1, this was not entirely trivial. There were some subtleties, and these subtleties actually point to the Euler relation. So I claim this constant term 1 for the Erhard polynomial is precisely the one that you see in the Euler relation. It's precisely the Euler characteristic of the polytope. So to get to the Dane summable equations, I need to talk about simple and simplicial polytopes. So here are the two definitions. So a polytope is simple if each vertex sees d facets. Of course, here I assume that 
the dimension of p is d. And p simplicial is the dual concept, which says that each facet sees d vertices. Yeah, so you can see two examples here. So I claim the cube is sort of a standard example of a simple polytope, and the cross polytope is the standard example of a simplicial polytope. Of course, on the right here, we have an immediate reformulation. And this is really uh, saying that uh, each facet uh, is a simplex. And this means that any face dimension lower than d is also a simplex. So a simplicial polytope is precisely a polytope for which each proper face is a simplex. And there's a dual notion going on for simple polytopes. So I claim because each vertex lies on d facets, you can now say that each edge lies on d minus 1 facets, and so on. Maybe the best way to look at these concepts is to go to the face lattice. So I'm going to draw this sort of schematically here. I think of my face lattice as some sort of big partially what it said. On top is the polytope, that's the top face, and on the bottom is the empty face. And so I claim these notions have to do with the vertices in the simple case and the facets in the simplicial case. I claim, and I invite you to think about this, a polytope is simple precisely when each of these sort of sub partially ordered set that are sitting between P and a given vertex, this is in the simple case, or each of the sub partially ordered sets, so this is now really a face lattice between a facet and the empty set if these are Boolean. Yeah, so let me remind you that the Boolean lattice is the face lattice of a simplex of the correct dimension. And so you can see this immediately in the simplicial case. We're saying each facet is a simplex, so you will see a Boolean lattice underneath each facet. And again, I claim in the simple case, this is sort of a dual version of that, you will see a Boolean lattice above each vertex. And so now you can imagine that we can use this fact. The face lattice of a simple polytope, let's say, might be really complicated. But as soon as I'm standing at the vertex and then look up in the face lattice, what I see above that vertex is just a Boolean lattice. And so here I know all my numbers in terms of relations are given by binomial coefficients. And if you now check out the proof of the main theorem in section 5.2, here it is, this is theorem 5.3, main ingredient of this proof is the fact that we have these Boolean sub lattices. And so I claim this binomial coefficient comes from this fact. This binomial coefficient counts something in a Boolean lattice. Anyway, let me just give you an intuition where this theorem comes from. So what we're doing now is we're looking at simple polytopes. I want to do Erhard theory, so again, I have to assume that they're rational. And now I want to repeat sort of this philosophy that you've seen in this proof, at least in the rational case, for the Euler relation. So again, I want to somehow extend phase numbers by looking at sums of Erhard polynomials of faces of a given dimension. And so this is this um, function that we call f sub k of t. So this is the sum of all Erhard polynomials, rather quasi polynomials, of the faces of dimension k. And so now if you use the special form of a face lattice of a simple polytope, you can prove this relation in theorem 5.3 that fk of t is related to the sort of lower dimensional fj. I want to point out two specialization, and that's sort of the point of this theorem over here. So the first specialization is 
just like what we did with Euler's theorem, we're going to go to constant terms. Again, on the left-hand side, you see the sum of the constant terms of the Erhard quasi-polynomial of each k-phase. And so before quasi-polynomial by constant term, I really mean the evaluation at t equals 0. So I get a 1 for each phase. And so the sum just gives me a phase number. And the same thing happens on the right-hand side. And these are the famous dane summerville equations. But I can look at another specialization. And this is the case when um, k is equal to d. Okay. So I will use um, theorem 5.3 for k equals d. Um, and I'm actually going to plug in negative t on the left-hand side and then positive t on the other side. So let's see what happens. This is now a sum that goes all the way up to d. I have an alternating term. And then each of my binomial coefficients is 1. So those go away, and I just have fj of t. OK, so fd, well, there's only one d-dimensional phase. That's the whole polytope. So this is the Erhard quasi-polynomial evaluated negative t. And what we're doing on the right-hand side is an alternating sum of the Erhard polynomials of the faces. And so if you think of this as sort of an inclusion-exclusion sum, and you know this really needs a proof, but OK, I'll let you meditate about this. Then what I'm writing down over here is an inclusion-exclusion way of getting the Erhard quasi-polynomial of the interior of the polytope. So this gives me back um, Erhard MacDonald reciprocity. So this comes to a full circle, what I mentioned in the beginning of this video. So we have here a theorem that generalizes simultaneously the Dane-Summerville equations and Erhard-McDonald reciprocity.